In this video we'll be talking about the Arduino SPI bus, the hardware SPI bus, rather than the, uh, the bits banged SPI bus which I used with the, uh, in my previous video. Uh, we'll be getting the MCP3304 ADC going and the MCP4822 DAC going. Um, you may have noticed uh, quite a big change in quality in the video. Uh, that's because I, I borrowed a camera from the, my college library. Uh, it's currently a, a Sony DCR SR300. I have it for the weekend, so I thought I'd uh, give it a try. The uh, they borrowed a tripod, the camera, and uh, the remote control for it. And uh, it's a hard disk inside, so I thought I'd give it a try. Uh, yeah, so I've been working for the past day or two trying to get the hardware SPI working. It turns out the Arduino I have, because it's the Mega, it has the extended ports. The hardware ports are actually wired to the back of it, which I will, uh, which I will show in a picture right now. <coughs> and, um, I've made some example uh, Arduino code. I got the drivers squashed down to little tiny few lines of code and they'll, they'll be available on the website which is uh, listed in the, uh, the description below. Anyway, without further ado, let's, uh, let's go to the bench and have a quick look about and see what I've done. Okay, the Serial Peripheral Interbus, or SPI as we call it, some people call it the SPI bus. <clears throat> now what it is, it's a, um, it's a synchronous communication interface which is designed to be short distance between two chips or more um, basically it consists of a, um, a clock which sometimes we call SLK okay and um, there's SDO serial data out or a lot of places will call it MOSI master out slave in and then adverse MISO master in slave out which would be SDI, it depends on what type you use. And then there's always a chip select line. And usually it's um, active low. Then basically these lines will then go to your device chip. So the slave. This can here can be, be the master. <coughs> then basically um, I'll tell you what, so we have uh, basically the the master will pull down the chip select to tell the slave I'm talking to you, and then the master usually sends data like a configuration by trying to tell it what to, what it wants, and then it'll read it back. Not all devices talk back to the master. The, the clock and chip select. So the clock, MOSI, and the chip selects are always driven by the master. The master in, slave out, is driven by the slave. <clears throat> now, like I said, not all chips have uh, the MISO bus uh, line. The MCP4822 is an example of that. That is basically, it just takes the clock, the MOSI line, and a chip select line. So let's see, the, this is the MCP3304, uh, this is the MCP4822. See, this is, only takes an input because there's no data to read back because you're just setting the, um, the information needed. <clears throat> now, on the MCP3304, it requires. Uh, let me just double check with the data sheet here. Okay, so the 
MCP3304 communicates with three 8 bit chunks. Obviously, you got the clock going at it over here, not to scale. <clears throat> now, with the MCP3304, you'll be clocking in basically the the first four bits are zero and then you've got a start bit and then you have a bit to select single or differential I believe one is for the for the single mode and then what you have here these two bits and the first bit of the next byte This is your channel select. And then basically all the um, <clears throat> all these other bits going out are ignored. These can all be zero. <clears throat> yeah, so they're all ignored. But basically as you're clocking out, there is also bytes clocking in. So that's going out. That's going. Let's see this. Masters here. Okay. So now using the uh, the Arduino command, let's see if I can bring that back up again. SPI.transfer. Basically, you put an SPI.transfer and this number in and it will return this byte now the very first byte is uh, we don't care what it is and in the second byte uh, this doesn't care this will be a zero this here will be your sign bit and then this is bit 11 bit 10 all the way down to bit zero. This constitutes a 12 bit number that we're talking about the bang bit, bit bang. Plus this equals the 13 bit value which we are seeing from the, uh, the MCP3304 code I'm using. Okay, so that's the ADC. Now with the MCP4822, <clears throat> this we're only working with uh, two bytes. Okay. Yeah, I should have drawn these before video, but. Uh... Okay. So, so master out only out we do not have a, a line going back the other way from the MCP4822 it just isn't on the chip it's not that you need it anyway <clears throat> then basically this first channel a low will select channel A and a high will select channel B so we select our two channels now this one is not used this here is a gain bit. Now, if it's a uh, if it's a one, then it'll be zero to two thousand two point zero four eight volts. And if it's a um, if it's a zero, it'll be one to four four point zero nine six volts for the scaling. <clears throat> and the next one we have the uh, the shutdown uh, bit. If it's a 1, the channel is active. If it's a 0, you'll get 0 volts out no matter what you tell it to go. And then we start here. There's D11 all the way down to D0. And this is your 12 bit value for your DAC. 
Now with the DAC, you just need to set the voltage using this. You just send it once, and then you don't need to send it again until you're ready to change it. Now with the ADC, depending on your application, you might want to read it every every few microseconds or milliseconds to get a an update. So with this, it works pretty well. Okay, so basically using it in the code, all we do is basically we uh, okay we pull down the the analog to digital converters uh, chip select read the information yeah. then we pull it up again and then we pull the the DAC chip select down write the information and then pull it up again and then you loop around and therefore it does not interfere with each other because when the uh, you've got to make sure your your DAC chip select is high before we start as well <clears throat> so basically when the chip select is high the, uh, the device releases the bus completely and does not take any you know does not put any load on the on the data pins they become high impedance and it will ignore anything on the bus allowing the selected device or no device or whatever to, uh, to continue on and we do that in turn until we get all the information and put all the information we want where we want it and that's how the uh, that's how the SPI bus works now with, with our SPI bus, we're doing it as a TTL level, which we're basically around about 0 to 5 volts. Now you can get the LV TTL, which is 0 to 3.3 .3 volt standard. Now usually you have to put some matching uh, components in there, um, as we call them, level translation. Because sometimes if you put a 5 volt signal into a 3.3 .3 volt device, you they may not last as long, or they may just burn out and die straight away. Some devices are capable of doing it, some are not. Now with the other way around, the 3.3 volts going to a 5 volt device, some devices may not be able to understand the uh, TTL, LV TTL signals that low, and therefore you'd have to amplify them with like a transistor or something. <clears throat> but we'll probably, uh, we'll probably get into that in the next digital video. I, uh, I am working on some designs for level translation. I do have a few different methods that will work and uh, I thought that might be beneficial for everyone to see. Especially if we, uh, we're thinking of putting things like an SD card interface possibly or an Ethernet interface. Those both use the 3.3 volt TTL standard. And <clears throat> I've also got a a thermocouple reading chip that I want to experiment with and that's the LVTTL as well unfortunately. Now before we move on to the bench I thought I'd uh, just quickly show the schematic. It's the same schematic as I, I shown last time and it's also available on the website. Uh, basically the uh, this, this, the clock MISO and MOSI are not connected to the uh, the Arduino on those pins anymore. They're actually connected to the hardware pins on the uh, the AT Mega. Um, you should look up your um, your specific board to make sure where the hardware pins are if you're going to hook up this circuit. Uh, let's go over to the bench. Here we have the Arduino board all hooked up. As you can see uh, here, I had to wire up to this connector here because the uh, on the original Arduino type the SPI is here now my Bitbang used the SPI here but I had to disconnect it from here and just reroute it to here which now works the chip select lines are still over here as before uh, but now like I said I'm using the, the hardware SPI with an older Arduino board you can still use the same port numbering as I uh, 
as I used in the previous example code. But actually, you, the only port numbers you specify are for the uh, chip select rather than for the actual uh, SPI lines itself because that's done automatically in the Arduino's libraries. Here I have it running with some example code. This is the same, almost the same example code as last time where the um, it reads the, the ports from channel 0 and outputs it through channel A on the DAC. So basically, as you can see, see if I can zoom in a little bit to the uh, screen. I'm still, uh, I'm still trying to figure out this camera. Currently I have the, uh, the port all the way to the highest level, so I'd slowly turn it down. All the way down. Doesn't seem to go past 1.7 millivolts or 1.6, it's... Uh, maybe... Uh, Maybe because of the bad calibration of my uh, my meter. <clears throat> okay, as for the code itself, <clears throat> all this will be available on the uh, on the website links below. <clears throat> Basically, uh, currently showing this on my. Uh, my laptop and my Mac laptop right now, but I actually did it all on the PC last night. Basically, the um, that's the entire DAC library, uh, the DAC code for the library. It's really small. And about a quarter of that is actually just comments telling you how to configure the uh, the variables. Now, this here is the the ADC code. And here's just a little averaging routine to average it 10 times, just to stabilize it a bit. And basically the, at the bottom, what the code is saying to do is to uh, set the output of DAC channel A, which is 0 here, yeah, to the 10 times average of the ADC divided by 2. Now, uh, previously with the bitbang routine I was only getting 12 bits out of it, but I found if I include the assigned bit and use it in single mode I can actually get a 13 bit value out of it, so so this code is actually working much better than the uh, the bitbang code. So then obviously to, um, to average it down to a 12 bit number I had to divide it by 2, which yeah is in, in essence a right shift. Now the zero at the end here selects if um, if we're using zero to four four thousand ninety six or zero to two thousand and forty eight for the output. Uh, zero selects zero to two uh, sorry zero to four thousand ninety six output of the DAC and one means that channel is enabled. If I put zero there, there'd be no voltage coming out of that channel no matter what voltage I select for it. Now, what I didn't show in the code was all the channels working, but I, um, during my debugging, I actually did have all individual channels working. And uh, should anyone want to see that kind of, that code, uh, I'm going to add it to my website or email it to you, whichever you want. But uh, you can use the example code, and it's it's easy enough to make your own one if you want to try that. Now, <clears throat> obviously, uh, we won't be keeping this board in this form. I will be etching a board with these modules on it. Probably get some surface mount versions on there, so it'll be easier for my uh, for my next steps. So basically, now, so what comes after this? Let's see. See, so now we've got the DAC working, then basically all we do is we put it through a scaling circuit, which will be based on an op amp or two, which I, uh, I think I'll be doing possibly in my next video, I'm not really sure. 
Um, it may be the, the, the un next analog video after the next one. Because I think I promised to do transistor regulation before we move on to the op amps. Okay, so yeah, so we enter DAC, scaling, and then we're doing the voltage regulation. So basically, depending on how your voltage regulation input is, they don't all, re you know, we're looking at 4096. 4.096 volts output from the DAC and um, you know a lot of these regulation circuits require maybe some of the full scale one to one input for what's coming out so the scaling circuit will handle that and, uh, like I said we'll go into detail in another video on that and then we'll uh, and then we'll put it with a voltage regulator that we decide on using. And that will give us the output, and this would be a crude power supply. None of this includes the uh, the current regulation yet, but basically the uh, there will be a circuit in here uh, checking the current and maintaining it, and the second channel of the DAC will set that level. I don't know if that shows up there. <clears throat> but like I said, that's going to be after we've got the voltage regulation going. And that will be a, uh, a very simple power supply. And that will be a model which we'll build upon. <clears throat> now we can add some intelligence to it. And uh, yeah, then we'll move on to the uh, all the fancy bits to it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope the uh, information was helpful to you. Um, the SPI bus has eluded me for a while. I think I would have got it done much sooner if I didn't, if I'd have realised before that the SPI pins on my Arduino board were in a different place than the standard boards that I was looking at. But once we got that all cleared up, it's all plain sailing, and uh, the code comes out very efficient. And uh, yeah, once I got it working was all happy. So yeah. So anyway, thank you for watching and uh, please like the video so I can get some more out and uh, if you haven't already done some please subscribe. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.